24 minutes now before the hour of 9 a.m. And as I promised, hanging out with me this morning is Representative Christopher J. England. He's the chair of the Alabama Democratic Party, incumbent right now. We appreciate you being with us today. Oh, I'm glad to be here. Thank you for having me. Now, you're here to talk about something very, very important today. Um, everybody is thinking about voting in November. Right. And, uh, so it's just such an important time to vote. And uh, you just share with us why you believe personally and politically why it's so important that everyone who can vote gets out to vote this year. Um, and, I, you know, it's cliche now, but it's, it's, your, it's your voice. It is the bare minimum that you can do to participate in our political process. Um, and if you, if you can imagine um, a room full of 100 people, and in that 100 people, we have a democratic process, and only 14 of those 100 vote. That means that 14 are deciding for the entire body, which means that if those 14 people don't share your um, priorities your values, then um, at the most important table, you're unrepresented and your interests aren't represented. And ultimately, you become food for the people who are making decisions. That's what my dad always used to tell me, if you're not at the table, you're on the menu. Right. Well, your vote puts you at the table. So in this election cycle, and specifically, mm -hmm. health care, um, social justice, criminal justice reform, all of those, and, and, and actually the right, you know, protecting your right to vote, mm -hmm. all of those things are on the ballot. So you have to vote to make sure that your voice is heard on those issues. And we want everybody's voice to be heard this year. Uh, November 3rd is that day, uh, yeah. election day, that we want to make sure that everybody gets out and vote. So registration is very important. How many people in uh, Alabama do you know are potentially not registered? Or uh, well, you know, um, I talk to our Secretary of State, John Merrill, often. Um, and, you know, as much as he touts the, the, that we are actually setting records in Alabama, and we have. We've set records uh, for the most people. Uh, in the <laughs> there are millions of people in Alabama who are registered. There are almost half as many people who aren't, mm -hmm. and for various reasons. Um, whether some feel like they can't vote because they have a criminal conviction on their record, others feel like they don't want to vote or can't vote because of other miscellaneous, um, just unrelated reasons to the process itself. Mm -hmm. There are many people, while the system makes it difficult for some to vote, mm -hmm. there are many that just disenfranchise themselves, which I just don't understand. Mm -hmm. um, especially now, since there's so much information available, uh, you know, you can go on the internet and find out anything. Mm -hmm. um, this, this, it doesn't make sense to me that people oftentimes disenfranchise themselves. Right. And if you think about it, over the course of the last few election cycles, um, we discovered that there are hundreds of thousands of people that didn't vote, which ultimately could have made a difference in an election. Um, I guarantee you that uh, Walt Maddox, for example, when he ran in 2018, um, would, have, would have loved to have the over 300,000 people that we know that were registered didn't vote, mm. um, wow. and many others. So. Uh, we, we, we know that there are hundreds of thousands of people out there who aren't registered. We also know that there are hundreds of thousands of people out there that who are registered who won't vote this election cycle. And ultimately, I think we will all suffer as a result of that. So since we're already talking about that, let's talk about the deadlines for registering to vote. Yeah. That's coming up really, really soon, right? Yes. Yeah. Matter of fact, the deadline to register to vote is October the 19th. Mm -hmm end of business. So you either have to have your application postmarked or you've done it in person by October the 19th. The deadline to, care, uh, to cast an absentee vote uh, in person is October the 29th. So uh, I know we haven't talked about this yet, but uh, I think many people need to know, all of us need to know, every eligible Alabama can vote in person right now, today, mm -hmm. in uh, absentee. Right. But we have until October the 29th to do so. All right. So um, go ahead. Mm -hmm. and, and obviously, you got November 3rd, which is the election day. So um, I think the most 
The two most important deadlines we need to remember right now is October 19th, which is the deadline to register. Mm -hmm. And if you get registered before the 19th, you could actually go register to vote mm -hmm. and vote the very next day. So, right. yeah, so you, you, you can, act, if you get, as long as you're registered before October 19th and end of business on that day, um, you can vote the very next day. So um, October 19th is the day, last day to register, and October 29th is the last day to cast your absentee vote in person. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people are talking, I'm hearing, they're asking me and I'm telling them, you know, uh, how can we do the early voting? We see other states doing early voting. They're going and they're getting their, their ballots in, um, voting for their candidates. Um, but Alabama can't do that, right? Well, we, well, see, we can. And that's, you know, uh, because of the coronavirus, the pandemic, um, our Secretary of State has the authority, my state law, to... Um, uh, include or change or amend the reason that you are you vote absentee. Mm -hmm. uh, so for this election cycle, you have the ability to check that second box, which deals with sickness or infirmary. Right. And everybody can check that box and vote absentee right now. Yeah. We, for all intents and purposes, have early voting in Alabama right now. And actually, we've been doing it since September the 9th. And from what I understand, we're actually setting records in the state of Alabama uh, because the, the most absentee votes that have been cast in any election, I think it's either 88 or 89,000. Mm -hmm. Well, while we have, there are more people who've requested absentee ballots in this election cycle with still several days to go, mm -hmm. which is way more than the 88 or 89,000 that have been cast in the past. So we're we're on our we're on pace to set records, mm -hmm. um, but I think people should take advantage of that opportunity. Um, one, I guess everybody's heard, and people are, are are a little leery of the postal system. Right. Well, uh, eliminate that postal, eliminate that, and just go vote in person. Right. Also, if you don't want to stand in line on November third because historically, our communities um, are the ones where the lines are always the longest and the wait is always the longest. Mm -hmm. And that's by design, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, so if you want to eliminate that possibility, you can pass those lines and go ahead and vote today. Right. And also, science tells us, and we listen to science, that being exposed, potentially exposed, to someone who is carrying the coronavirus, that person may not show any symptoms at all. And they could be standing in line next to you. Talking to you, having a great time. Yeah, having a great time, be, be as sick as the day is long. Um, right. or being about on the verge of becoming really sick. Um, but at, the point, at that point, we know that they shed more virus than they, than they do when they're actually showing symptoms. Mm -hmm. um, you can avoid that possibility by going to vote early. Mm -hmm. So we know that voting early, in early absentee, is safer you can also make sure that you, your vote is counted because you follow the directions on the application and turn your ballot in that day. Mm -hmm. And there's also, uh, I'll give you a number and you can follow, make sure your vote is counted. Mm -hmm. So we know it's safer, mm -hmm. it's more effective and it's efficient. And once you do that, you can cast your vote and then you can tell everybody else that you know how easy it was, right. safe it was, and then encourage them to go do the same. Right. So. Voting early is safer. Mm -hmm. It can actually turn, it can actually increase turnout when more people take advantage of it. Mm -hmm. And on November 3rd, it can keep you doing what you would normally do anyway, going to work. Just sitting around um, watching, right? <laughs> watching the news. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you, and you, I know you hear all the time people say, well, November 3rd, it was raining mm -hmm. or it was cold. I just didn't feel like getting out. Well, I know, I know people. I know my folks sometimes can be, you know, come up with some excuses to do some of these things. Go do it right now. Just get it over with. Right. Now, let, I think it's, it's worth repeating exactly what they need to do, because like I said, we don't act, Alabama doesn't actually have early voting, but there have been some provisions made. So anybody who wants to vote early can vote early. Right. So let's be specific about what they need to do, because we don't want anybody going down there and they say, no, you can't vote. We don't have early voting. Um, and, and then they don't know what to do, know what to say, what to check off. So let's go just read yes. that again and make sure they know exactly what to do to make sure they have no problems when they go down to the courthouse uh, to vote. 
All right. Um, so you have two options. You can vote absentee in person or you can vote absentee by mail. Both require an application. So when you go vote in person absentee, you are going to go down to your county courthouse and find your local absentee ballot manager, absentee ballot manager, election manager. Mm -hmm. And they're gonna give you an application. And on that application, is you're gonna fill out all your personal information. You're also going to check the box because you have to have an excuse. Mm -hmm. You've been authorized by law to check that second box, dealing with sickness and infirmary. So mm -hmm. check that box. But, I'll, I'll, but also, you're also going to make sure you bring two things with you. First, your mask. And secondly, your ID. Your ID is required to vote absentee in person. So you do that application, you fill it out, um, show your ID, that application, you turn it in, and they will hand you your ballot. Fill your ballot out, vote, vote for whoever you want. Now, you, I, you know, I, I, I'm telling folks, you know, they should vote for Joe Biden and Doug Jones <laughs> and Democrats all down the line. But first and foremost, I want to make sure that everybody votes, vote, everybody who votes, their vote is counted. Mm -hmm. So you fill it out, turn that ballot back in, and guess what? You get an I voted sticker and you're done. done. Now, when you're done with the voting part, but the other part starts, it's when you get on social media, you take a picture of yourself and you say, every day is election day, I just voted, you should do the same. I like that. <laughs> or you send your friend a text message or you call somebody and say, look, can you believe in Alabama? I just voted. You should go do the same. And just say it over and over again. Every day is election day in Alabama. Go cast your vote. Mm -hmm. The other part of it is you can vote absentee by mail. And that actually requires a lot more right. in, 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 in the process. Right. That includes taking a photo ID, I mean, taking a copy of your photo ID. That includes getting witnesses, not getting it notarized. That inc includes putting it in two different ballots. And it also includes um, mailing it. And then you mail your application and you have to wait for the ballot to come back to you in the mail. Mm -hmm. So then once you get the ballot, you have to put it in two different envelopes with your identification and then mail it back. Right. So I'm telling people, if you can do it in person, eliminate the middle middleman yeah. and just go ahead, go down to the courthouse, mm -hmm. take 15, 20 minutes, and get it done. It's much easier and it's much safer. And you're not seeing as long of a, a, a lines either uh, when you do it that way. If you just go on down there, I mean, there's probably going to be other people down there, but it won't be like around the building, will it? Or have you seen? No. It? Um, well, actually, I, I take that back. In several locations, including in, in, in Jefferson County, we've seen just hundred. I mean, we've seen thousands of people, um, and they're taking 500 folks a day sometimes down at the courthouse to, for people to do their absentee voting. Mm -hmm. But on average, against, uh, I mean, across the state of Alabama, your wait will be shorter, your process will be quicker, and, uh, and I'm convinced that it'll be a lot safer. All right, and then we want everybody to vote. And I understand um, a law was passed a couple of years ago uh, for voter rights restoration. So yeah. this is for folks out there who um, have committed some kind of crime that has prevented them from voting. Where are we with that? And those people out there who may have this and but want to vote, how you know? What's tell us? Just update us on that. Well, um, for a long time, Alabama used to. Alabama was a state that. Um, took away the voting rights of people who were convicted of crimes of moral turpitude. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately for years, um, there was no standard, meaning that you could go from county to county and whatever the election manager there felt like was a crime of moral turpitude, they could prevent you from registering and voting, right? Mm -hmm. So we passed a law recently that limited the crimes of moral turpitude to a list of about 50 and I don't know that on the top of my head, but you can go to alabama.gov and actually that's your one-stop shop. You can find out if you're registered, how to register, if you can register, and then follow the process from there. Or you can actually go to your local board of registers office and do the same thing. But we shortened that list to about 50 criminal offenses that you know the legislature believed were related to moral turpitude, really. Um, so what that means is when that law passed, it created hundreds of thousands of voters overnight. Right. Mm -hmm. So you, your crime had to fit that definition. 
Now, I, know, I think most of us believe that there's no real rational relationship between criminal conviction and the right to vote. I don't think anybody should lose their right to vote because of a criminal conviction, because it really doesn't make any sense. Right. But since we're where we are, we have to deal with the law as it is and work to change it. So, but as it states now, um, most people who thought they lost their right to vote or don't have it because of a criminal conviction actually do. Okay. And most people, you know, are, you know, they say our people perish for lack of knowledge. Mm -hmm. um, the information is there and it's available and you can find out relatively quickly if you can or cannot vote. Mm -hmm. And all you gotta do is ask. And, and I guarantee you in most situations because the, the number of crimes and the list of crimes is so limited that most people who don't vote because of that reason actually have the ability to register and vote. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And again, I urge you to go check your local board of registers and your county courthouse or go to alabamavotes.gov and figure all, those, figure all those things out. And please do it before October 19th. Okay. So they're not the same. Okay. Yes. Because um, they can register to vote is October. Last day is October 19th. There are people right now who are even incarcerated who never lost their right to vote. Wow. And actually have the ability to vote absentee because of it. So that's county jails or in the penitentiary. So, I mean, uh, there's really no excuse. Um, you know, all the barriers that have been placed in your way to vote ought to tell you how important they think your vote is. Mm -hmm. And most people, I know most folks, when they're presented with a, a barrier of some sort, mm -hmm. it should, especially if it's an arbitrary barrier, it should make you work even harder to do what they're trying to keep you from doing. Mm -hmm. And there's no process that they have to go through, right? To get that? Um, no. Okay. Absolutely not. There's, there's a very limited number of people right now that have to actually apply for voter rep for, for their rights to be restored. Okay. Because when you limit the crimes and eliminate those that are uh, that used to be uh, prohibit you from voting, there is no process you go through other than just going to get registered. Okay. The, the, the individuals that committed crimes of moral turpitude have to go through the other part of process of getting pardoned mm -hmm. and, and getting their rights restored that way. Mm -hmm. But there's actually a process that you go through with the Board of Pardons and Paroles that is quicker than your average pardon process if you're eligible to get your rights restored. Mm -hmm. In Alabama, you do have to pay all your fines and court costs before you're eligible, mm -hmm. but only related to the original offense itself. Okay. So any uh, costs or, or, or things that you accrue while you were incarcerated that are separate and apart from the original charge and the original sentence will not keep you from voting. Wow. All right, we're talking with the uh, chair of the Alabama Democratic Party, Mr. and Representative Christopher J. England, and we're so happy to have him with us today. We've been talking about how to vote early in the state of Alabama. So as we get ready to close out, uh, Representative, you, as the head of the Democratic Party, what, what else are you all doing to get the vote out? Uh, you. Great question. Um, uh, many of you should have heard from us either through phone calls or through text messages. Uh, according to our last count, we have reached over, we have attempted to contact well over 2 million voters in the state of Alabama. Wow. So um, whether it be through text message, whether it be through email, whether it be through phone calls, we have reached out to you and we are, are, are making sure that you know what your deadlines are, your rights are, and also how to do those things. Mm -hmm. and reminding you that you need to go vote now or on November the 3rd. Okay. We're also created a very uh, strong voter protection effort. As we've seen um, across election cycles, um, there are people who do not want you to vote. Um, I, I remember in Huntsville recently, uh, people who went to Alabama A&M and many uh, universities, Oakwood and so forth, found out on election day that they had been purged. Mm. Well, so here's what we do. Um, if you have any issues on election day, I want to give you a phone number. And I want you to call this number because somebody will answer and help you on that day and then keep that record to make sure we can tell the public that voter suppression is real and it still exists. Mm -hmm. So the Alabama Democratic Party has a voter protection hotline. It is 
go vote two. Okay. 833-GO-VOTE-TWO. You call that number and someone from the Alabama Democratic Party or the Democratic National Committee will get on that horn and make sure that you can cast your vote, all right? Also, um, I don't know, we've, we've also been a part of helping to organize Saturday voting across the state. So there are several counties, including places like Mobile, all across the Black Belt uh, that are offering, going to offer two days, the 17th and the 24th, where you can actually go to vote on Saturday, early voting, absentee on Saturday. Um, so we're working to make sure that not only people are, are knowledgeable about that, but we're going to be on the ground to make sure that your information, we take your information and help you navigate that process. So you should have heard from us. If you haven't, you will. We got an option. We got. We have people to call to make sure that your vote is protected, mm -hmm. and then we're also doing whatever is necessary to create new avenues for you to be able to safely vote. Make sure safely. Make sure your your voice your your voice is heard. And your voice your vote is counted. Um, and also, we're fundraising to make sure that we build a foundation that takes us beyond November third and makes us competitive until twenty twenty two and beyond. Um, the state of Alabama deserves a democratic voice. Mm -hmm. It deserves to hear the other opposing sides so you can make an informed decision. And so the days of the Democratic Party not engaging in, in public debate, making sure that people understand things like Medicaid expansion, making sure that people understand how important social justice is, equal treatment under the law, and protecting your voting rights and those things, those are important to Alabamians too. And in order to have a balanced conversation, you have to hear from both sides. Right. So in Alabama Democratic Party, make sure that you hear from both sides. And last but not least, if you are a racist or a bigot in Alabama, the Alabama Democratic Party is coming for you and we're going to root you out. Mm. And I think that's important because Alabama itself, even in 2020, has become too comfortable with um, discrimination racial hatred and bigotry. And the only way you can get comfortable with embracing the future is to be uncomfortable now. And we're gonna make you uncomfortable so you can have these difficult conversations so they can become easier in the future. Wow. Wow. So this is what our Alabama Democratic Party is doing. Wow. Uh, we're getting started. Uh, we got a lot of work to do, but we're making progress. And I'm proud, I'm, I'm very proud of it. Thank you so much, and you should be proud. That's a long list of great things that's happening in Alabama. So we appreciate you being with us, Representative Christopher England. He is the chair of the Alabama Democratic Party. And uh, thank you for making sure that our listeners know exactly what they can do to get registered and to vote early before and ahead of November 3rd. So thank you so much, and hopefully we'll have you on again, maybe later on sometime. Before I go, I want to say thank you. Yeah. To the, uh, all the people that are currently volunteering and all the people that work for the Alabama Democratic Party, uh, they're making all this work. We have over 50 hardcore, hardworking employees that are hardcore Democrats and are going to make us victorious on November 3rd. So I want to thank, make sure I say that. And thank you, everybody, for listening this morning. Thank you for having me. And thank you for being with us. And we'll talk to you another time in the future. Are right, you listening to Praise 94.1 FM, WJO? You will be back with more great music just to encourage you along on this Transparent Tuesday. <laughs>